Increasing Prevention Act. I started calling for this up or down vote since May 24th because I knew and sexual assault survivor advocates knew that if the Armed Services Committee leadership had the chance, they would strip the provision out of the NDAA behind closed doors despite the overwhelming support the bill has in both the Senate and House. That is exactly what has just happened. Time and time again, I've asked on this floor for the same opportunity to have an up or down vote. Time and time again, I've heard the same false promise that we would proceed under regular order and that the will of the members of this body would be respected. I was told that, quote, the best way to move forward on this issue is to ensure that all 26 members of the Armed Services Committee have their voices heard and to consider this legislation in the course of the markup of the fiscal year 2022 defense bill, end of quote, and that it was, quote, the traditional means of making these decisions, end of quote. I was assured, quote, fulsome debate during committee markup of the annual defense bill is the hallmark of our committee. It ensures that everyone's voice is heard, end of quote. Here on this very floor, I heard, quote, all amendments offered by senators on the committee will be fully considered during the full committee markup. And that, quote, that is, in fact, the tradition of the committee. If a member wants to vote on an amendment, we will vote, end of quote. So we took it to the committee. We had the fulsome debate, and we voted. The Military Justice Improvement and Increasing Prevention Act was included in the Senate Armed Services NDAA bill and passed out of committee 23 to 3. That's a pretty decisive vote. But despite all of the claims that we would follow regular procedure and everyone's voices would be heard, when the doors closed for the conference, the story changed. Our votes were not respected. Our voices were silenced. Those promises were broken. The House and Senate Armed Services leadership gutted our bipartisan military justice reforms, stripped them from the NDAA, and did a disservice to our service members and our democracy. Committee leadership has ignored the will of a filibuster-proved majority in the Senate and a majority of the House in order to do the bidding of the Pentagon. This is an act of blatant disregard for the service members veterans and survivors who have fought for an impartial and independent military justice system that's worthy of the sacrifice that they make every day for our country. Committee leadership has also ignored President Biden, our Commander-in-Chief's public support for removing felonies from the chain of command and fallen short of even the limited reforms that Secretary of Defense Austin called for that would have removed sex crimes from the chain of command. Despite claims otherwise, the NDAA does not remove sex crimes from the chain of command because the commander remains the convening authority, a central role to the military justice system. Every single court-martial will still begin with the words, this court-martial was convened by order of the commander. Commanders can still pick the jury select the witnesses, and allow service members accused of crimes the option of separation from service instead of facing a court-martial, a total denial of justice. We know that removing convening authority from commanders is critical to providing a system that is fair and perceived to be fair by the service members. To quote Secretary Austin's own panel, quote, the DOD's Office of the Special Victim Prosecutor Structure must be and must be seen as independent of the chains of command of the victim and of the accused all the way through the secretaries of the military departments. Anything less will likely be seen as compromising what is designed to be independent part of the military justice process. Thus significantly undermining this recommendation. Finally, because of the breadth and depth of the lack of trust by junior enlisted service members in commanders, Secretary Austin, go, or the IRC goes on, it was determined that the status quo or any variation on the status quo that retained commanders as disposition authorities 
in sexual harassment, sexual assault, and related cases would fail to offer the change required to restore confidence in the system, end of quote. That was Secretary Austin's own panel. The NDAA bill does not provide meaningful change to the status quo. Our bill would provide it by moving serious crimes like sexual assault out of the chain of command completely, putting them in the hands of the most capable people in the military, those independent, impartial, highly trained, uniformed prosecutors. That is a system our service members can trust. I know that because that is the reform that survivors have asked for over and over and over again. Since I started calling for this vote in May, we estimated more than 11,000 service members will have been raped or sexually assaulted, and more will have been victims of other serious crimes. Two in three of those survivors will not even report those crimes because they know that under the current system, they are more likely to face retaliation than to receive justice. It's clear we cannot wait for committee leadership to recognize the importance of this reform. Madam President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that a time to be determined by the majority leader in consultation with the Republican leader, the Senate Armed Services Committee be discharged from further consideration of S-1520, and the Senate proceed to its consideration that there be two hours for debate equally divided in the usual form, and that upon the use or yielding back of that time, the Senate vote on the bill with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Uh, Madam President. Senator from South Carolina. Yes, thank you. Reserving the right to object to my colleague uh, from New York, I <clears throat> want to compliment you for, for the efforts you've brought to the table on trying to reform the military justice system.